Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. I can't remember if you've done a similar problem before. I was looking for uh, something like this, but I haven't found one. If you do know, please let me know. Anyways, we have x to the power x plus 1 equals 81, and we're going to be looking for x values. And one of the things that I'd like to also talk about is maybe just bring it up, the Lambert's W function for this problem. Is there a solution using Lambert's W function? If you do know, please let me know because I haven't seen something clearly. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this equation as x to the power x times x to the power 1. That is equal to 81. Now, x to the power 1 is equal to x, so we can write it as x to the power x times x equals 81. And then um, I'm going to divide both sides by x, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. First of all, I want to get x to the power x alone, and also uh, I want to get a different function on the right-hand side. So we do have x to the power x equals 81 over x. Now, if you look at the original problem, you probably guessed the solution, right? Because one of the things that we should always try is if there is any integer or rational solutions, we should uh, try to find one. And if you've seen it, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen it because that's kind of obvious, hopefully, right? But I'm not going to say it right now. But hopefully you found it. And um, here's another question that comes up. Is that the only solution? So you found one solution by guess and check. But what about the other ones, right? So that's why we kind of have to approach it from a general perspective. So let me go ahead and introduce what I'd like to introduce. And then... I will show you a graph which will also explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so we ended up with two sides. On one side we have x to the power x, on the other side we have 81 over x. So let's go ahead and talk about one of these functions. How about looking at f of x equals x to the power x closely. Now this function can be differentiated to understand the behavior but in order to differentiate, you kind of have to write it like this. Anything can be written as like, if you have t, it can be written as e to the power ln t, right? e being the Euler's number and ln is the natural log. So we can write this as e to the power ln x to the power x. And this allows us to get rid of the exponent and bring it to the front. And now we can write it as e to the power x ln x. So f of x can be written that way. And now I'd like to differentiate both sides. Let's go ahead and use the first derivative to understand if this function has any maximum or minimum points. Okay? How do you differentiate e to the power something? Remember the rule. e to the power u, when differentiated, becomes e to the power u times u prime. u prime is just the derivative of u, which is also called the chain rule or the derivative of the inside. Make sense? Okay. Great. So let's go ahead and use that rule, e to the power u, and multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which is product rule. So we're going to write it as the derivative of x times the second function plus the second function derivative of ln x multiplied by the first function. These two cancel out, and we end up with the following. e to the power x ln x multiplied by ln x plus 1. This is the first derivative of f. But notice that e to the power x ln x turns into x to the power x from here. And then you're going to get basically the derivative of f includes f. So that's kind of interesting, right? But that shouldn't be a surprise because we're dealing with the uh, ln function here. Anyways, so when you set this equal to 0, obviously e to the power something cannot be negative, right? This is always going to be positive. Can't even be 0. So this has to be 0. So that gives us ln x plus 1 equals 0, which means ln x equals negative 1, which means x equals e to the power negative 1 from uh, definition of logs, but that can be also written as 1 over e. So that's our critical point. Let's go ahead and make a table. I know some folks like the second derivative, but I kind of like the first derivative test with a table. This is going to be x, this is going to be f prime, and this is going to be f. 
the only x value that makes the derivative 0 is 1 over e. So we're going to put that here and put a little 0 because 1 over e is a solution. Okay? And then we're going to be looking at the sign to the right and to the left of 1 over e. So this is what you need to think about. This is the first derivative, right? This is the first derivative. If x is greater than 1 over e, then ln x is going to be greater than ln 1 over e, which is negative 1. So ln x plus 1 is going to be positive, because if you add 1 to both sides, you get that. So if x is greater than 1 over e, then we're going to have a positive sign for the derivative, otherwise negative. At 1 over e, the first derivative becomes 0. So we should have a horizontal tangent at that point. What does that mean? Our function is decreasing because that's what the first derivative test means. And our function is increasing on that interval, giving us a minimum at 1 over e. OK, so this is what it looks like then. What is x equals 1 over e? We have a minimum, right? f has a minimum. But what is the minimum value? Well, f of x is equal to x to the x. You can replace x with 1 over e. And then you're going to get 1 over e to the power 1 over e. Or you can write it as e to the power negative 1 over e. That's going to be the y value. OK? So you can go in the market. And you're going to get an idea about this, uh, the behavior of this function. But what happens at 0? A lot of people say 0 to the power 0 is 1. But that's not right. It is indeterminate. We don't know what it is. But if you take the limit as x approaches right, uh, I mean, as, a, as x approaches 0 from the right, then the limit will be 1. So that's a limit value. So our function is going to decrease and then increase. So what's that supposed to mean? This is the graph of y equals x to the x. And we're trying to find, uh, set it equal to what? 81 over x. Great. What, what is the graph of 81 over x uh, going to look like, right? Well, here's the thing. This function, if x values are greater than 1 over e, it's going to increase. So if our function, depending on where it starts, so we're kind of looking at 81 over x. If x is 0, oops, it's undefined. So it's not going to have x equals 0, y equals 0, which means it's going to have both the x and y axis as asymptotes. So in other words, this is a hyperbola that kind of looks like this. So they will intersect at a single point. Yay. How do you find that value? By guess and check. Look at the original problem. What, what did it say? x to the power x plus 1 equals 81. But I can write this as 3 to the fourth power. By comparison, x equals 3 works. But guess what? That's the only value that works. So that is the only solution. Let's get, look at a nicer version of the graph of these two functions. And hopefully this will make, this will make more sense. But notice that, well, I wanted to show you the graph of y equals x to the x on Desmos without any zoom. Notice that these dots include uh, negative x values. So when x is negative, the function goes crazy. It gives you a bunch of scattered dots. And you can see them on even on the x-axis too. Look at that. That's kind of cool, right? Anyways, let's take a look at the graph of these two functions. They intersect at 3, 27. Therefore, x equals 3 is the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.